Hello again, as we head now for Reno, Nevada in the USA for the fight that should have happened years ago, but it's been well worth waiting for. Two hugely colorful characters, Hector Camacho and Ray Mancini, never actually met in the ring, though both vied for lead role on the world stage in the early 80s. But we never knew who was the better fighter. Well, at last they can sort it out, this time at light welterweight. Our commentator, Reg Gutteridge. Well, it's almost like a hometown for Boom Boom Mancini. First time back for four years. Although he comes from Youngstown, Ohio, he's fought quite a bit in Reno. But just look at the macho man Camacho there in this sequin loincloth. He really does dazzle in everything he does, this fellow. And a, a very much a grudge, Max. Can you imagine? Been out for four years now, Mancini. A good, ambitious fighter in his day, but he's found a little bit of a rip for this because he dislikes Camacho. And Camacho only one fight in the last couple of years, outpointing uh, Howard Davis. But that's not too difficult. My mate Jim Watt did that once. So very much a Mancini crowd here. And although Camacho comes out of Spanish Harlem in New York, he's been training in Florida. And really has been a waste of talent, in my opinion. 34 unbeaten fights, 17 stopped and still not fighting often enough, always getting himself in some form of disputes. But he'll do this hit and run job now. He's, he, he proved that with Cornelius Bozer Edwards in Florida. That's how he stole that verdict. Mancini, well, rarely in a dull fight. He's had some absolute beauties. He was a former WBA lightweight champion and he lost in two great battles to Livingston Bramble and the second one only by one point here in Reno back in 85. Retired, went into a bit of television acting but he's found out that job's not uh, too easy either so he's getting back to the ring. Camacho, former champion, obviously stripped of his title at super featherweight, nine stone four and now they're up for this light welterweight 10 stone and they've added a little bit of a champion the new wbo the organization that's called but there's a crazy fragmentation of titles at the moment but nonetheless they've hung a, a title for this one so a minute to go then in the opening round he's done well as it's early to judge a man's uh, condition really but the way he's come out firing Mancini considering he's been out of the ring he's he really is doing well in the opening round he, look, he looks full of fire and ready he doesn't look stale sometimes a good layoff can do this kind of fighter a bit of good who's been in some rough battles in his time incredible ones with Bobby Chacon he had but it's, that's what it's going to be, cagey stuff then, from Camacho. Good counter punching by the, I was going to say champion, that uh, he held it last. So Mills Lane, the referee, he's local, works in the district attorney's office. Tremendously popular fighter, this uh, Ray Mancini. So it is Camacho then, ready for the second. All the gimmicks in the hairstyle, isn't it? He doesn't miss a trick, but he, he can fight a bit to go with it, so you could excuse it a bit. He's got to chase the whole time, Mancini. He knows that he can't back off because Camacho won't come to him and there wouldn't be a fight at all then. And the Lenny emblazoned on his uh, top of his trunks there, Mancini, is actually his father's name. He was a good fighter in his time and used to spar with Britain's own Jack Kidberg. Considering Camacho was a bit of a firebrand at the start of his career, he's been a pro since he was 18 years old, and he's now 26. He's certainly settled down and got a crafty old campaigner. 
He was down in his last fight, the first time that he's taken account against a fellow called Ray's Cruz last June for Macho. So can Mancini nail him? Ten stone division then. The British champion at this weight, recently won, is Clinton McKenzie. And then, of course, you've got other world-recognized, Roger Mayweather, Juan Koji of Argentine, and Meldrick Taylor, the former Olympian. So there's a lot of money to be earned in this division, for, certainly for the winner of this. Camacho has been taunting Mancini the whole time in the build-up to this fight. They've done tremendously well at the Lawler Event Center in Reno, and Reno Tourist Board have put up $600,000 to have it staged here. They resent Las Vegas getting all the publicity. Bozer Edwards, he frustrated Bozer a bit, but they made it a, a big margin of points at the end, which I disagreed with at the time. Good, smart countering by Camacho, but the aggression often counts on judges' cards, particularly in America. And that's coming, obviously, from Mancini. Of hitting and holding there, he was onto that Mills Lane. And he can afford to take a bow as he goes back to the corner there, Camacho. And there it is. Out for round five, then scheduled for 12. With the as it is WBO, the World Boxing Organization, the split away from the WBA trying to make a bit of a name for themselves. Tommy Hearns won their first championship. And the pattern's been very much the same. Mancini are just managing to contain that cut around the left eye. And it's been all the cagey stuff coming from Camacho, but quite honestly, nothing in it. Well, I'm surprised. I thought maybe the comeback of Mancini uh, well, may have been a bit of a mistake, but certainly after five rounds, he's, he's got all the fire in the world. What a great natural fighter he is. Well, well bred for the game, I suppose, with his dad being a top class one. He really loves this game and uh, dislikes Camacho intensely. But as I say, coming back from a much softer world of acting, isn't it? You always feel that, well, maybe he's got a bit of the high lemming content in him. There it is, midway through the fifth. bit of mauling but nonetheless a good hard and competitive fight this a little bit rough inside you see note then how he picks off Camacho that's where the, we will be scoring see, Man Mancini's eye catching the way he bundles in exciting crowd pleasing fighter but Camacho does uh, pick well he's certainly share of punches anyway on the retreat This was a referee, incidentally, that uh, Frank Bruno's manager, Terry Lawless, said he preferred to have man uh, handled his uh, fight with Mike Tyson, both before and after the contest. He does that walk away the whole time, very frustrating, really. 
This uh, man seeing he's got to wait for him now. So well, what are you going to do next? And Camacho doesn't care. He stalls for time and doesn't mind admitting it. Quite outrageous trunks these, aren't they? They look more like a bathing beauty than a fighter. So they want time now to work on uh, Mancini's eye there. And uh, as, uh, as fighters go, well, that wouldn't be considered very dangerous. Out for the seventh. And uh, again, fairly seesawed, I would have thought, in scoring. Depends really which way these judges are going to favour the, either the aggression or the smart countering of Camacho. I think Camacho probably is just stealing it a bit. Early on we thought Camacho was really going to be a big puncher. We've seen a lot on ITV. But he's only actually stopped 17 of 34, which is, uh, in recent fights, he's been going the distance. He won his first championship, defeating Luis Ramirez, and defended against Edwin Rosario, who comes from the then Tyson camp. <laughs> Certainly, the crowd totally with Mancini. The Americans like to see the their favourites going forward and doing them what they think is the scoring and it isn't always that way certainly from the back of the hall it probably looks a lot different hasn't slackened at all and normally by the seventh they're trying to steal a breather or two both of them but they haven't here so the macho man and the boom boom are living up to all the pre-publicity American television packager Lou Falcino backed this right from the start and uh, he's proved it right so far full crowd here 13,000. Well, he's pulling some punches back here. He must be, man. See, there's not much in it either, but uh, I would have thought he's got it back level again. And really overcoming that... Uh, Little nick around the left eye there, and uh, certain seconds haven't had any problem with it. So the nod from Camacho, as always, he, he really is a cocky devil. I find him actually a bit amusing, but uh, he's been a little bit of troubleshooter during his time. Uh, caught once driving cars, well, that's not too bad, except that he didn't own them. As they say, only in America. So looking for the big finish then. And in the final round, just a, well, hardly a friendly tap of glove, but they've obeyed the referee. And there's not anything in this fight. It, it really could go either way. I would still think that maybe Camacho's moving around and stealing punches, good clean shots. May have won it, but on the other hand, Mancini's great battle for him, being out so long. And we really thought he was, well, well over the hill when he lost twice in really bruising battles with the Livingston Bramble. So no knockdowns and a very similar pattern 
in all these late rounds. And because they're a couple of cocky and durable characters, really, nobody really predicted that there would be a stoppage other than through injury, and that's just as well. And uh, Mills Lane has let them get on with this. He's handled it well. It's been an easy fight for a referee, really. A little bit some mauling, but nobody's uh, really taken too many liberties anyway, considering the, the words they all had. Now, they're there, it got a bit rough. He's good at that, Camacho. Now, he says, if you do that again, and you're hitting and holding. Oh, you'll get disqualified well in the last round uh, I don't think he's that serious Mills name but he had to make the gesture anyway oh yes he's he's definitely eye-catching and stealing with the right hand lead I think that'll be the the punch that might sway the decision to him then Camacho But for the sheer honest endeavor, and as they say, taking the fight to the other guy, then Mancini would deserve it. So inside the last minute then, and they both have stayed the course well. They must have trained hard for this. They've been out of the ring, hasn't really taxed them too much. Took a while to get the punch sharpness going, but that came in the middle rounds. Now, the referee doesn't score. Three judges. And there it is. We're getting to the countdown there, and it's, it really is a difficult one to sort out. I'd be quite happy with a drawn decision and an obvious rematch. fair enough they didn't want to fight after the bell and despite all the words they show a little bit of respect at the end Mancini is so pleased with his comeback and he thinks he's won it and the crowd really on their feet they enjoyed that it was a good hard slog and would you believe that they had to weigh in at 2 30 in the morning because they had a big dispute about what time so the commission said okay 2 30 in the morning so then, here's a decision. Pete McDonald scores the bout 116 to 112 for Boom Boom Mancini. Doug Tucker scores the bout 115 to 113 for Hector Camacho. A one each. And Chuck Jaffa scores the bout 115 to 113 for the winner. Hector Macho, Camacho. So the Macho man has got it, stealing the points as always, and really you couldn't really knock that, but I feel a bit sorry for Mancini, because it was a great comeback for him. I thought he was going to get caught up, I thought he was going to be worse than I was going to beat him, but it was closer than I, it wasn't as close as I thought it would be, but... He fought a great fight. He knows. He knows. Hey, did you think you should have gotten the decision? Oh, absolutely. I feel that pressed the fight. It wasn't pretty, but I thought hey, I got the job done. Next time it'd be greater. Yeah. If he still ain't convinced. L like to do it again? We'll do it again. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. If the people, the people would pay to see it, I would love to do it. So let's hope as they carry this man on the ring that he'll fight more often now.